Mistakes are simply a part of movies, because even the very best film employs the work of so many disciplines and departments that it's just not possible to coordinate them flawlessly. And for the most part, movie mistakes are something you might fleetingly chuckle at and then forget about. Yet every so often, a mistake will prove egregious enough to lodge itself in your brain and become apparent every single time you watch the movie from that point on. So here's an apology in advance for ensuring you'll never be able to unsee these movie mistakes. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 movie mistakes you'll never unsee. Number 10. John McClane isn't really barefoot in Die Hard. One of the most memorable aspects of John McClane's one-man crusade against Hans Gruber and his terrorist outfit in Die Hard is that McClane does the whole damn thing barefoot. Yet play close attention during the climax when McClane discharges a machine gun on the Nakatomi Plaza's roof and FBI agents Johnson and Johnson, no relation, open fire upon him and you might notice something most peculiar indeed. For a brief moment, we can see that Bruce Willis isn't actually barefoot but wearing a thin, flesh-coloured shoe over his feet. This was obviously done for practical reasons, given the safety concerns of having Willis actually running around performing stunts in his bare feet. Number 9. Brian pulls an invisible handbrake in Too Fast, Too Furious. Too Fast, Too Furious isn't exactly a movie where anyone expects perfect continuity or shot composition. Yet the film nevertheless contains a hilarious mistake that's all the more memorable due to just how freaking weird and unnecessary it seems. During the sequence where Brian O'Connor and Roman race one another on the highway, Brian pulls in front of Roman and executes a handbrake turn, sliding his car around and driving backwards while remaining in front of Roman and flipping him the bird for good measure. But keep your eyes peeled during the shot where Brian and pulls the handbrake, allegedly anyway, and you'll see that he does nothing of the sort. He just pulls it thin air, and yet his car gracefully spins around regardless. Such is the magic and mystery of the Fast and Furious franchise. Number 8. The same extra runs past Doctor Strange four times in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. During the opening sequence of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, we see Doctor Strange take on the grotesque demonic entity Gargantus. Pay close attention during this scene though and you might notice that the very same extra runs past Doctor Strange four separate times. As Gargantus picks up a bus to hurl at Strange, we can see a man in a dark jacket with a shopping bag running past Strange. And in the 15 seconds that follow, he repeats the same action three additional times, all while Strange continues to walk towards the creature and cast spells. Granted, the editorial process on a huge Marvel blockbuster must be an absolute logistical headache, and ultimately the editors are only working with the material they've been given. But that's still a pretty damn ridiculous continuity error, and one that should have been easily caught during principal photography. Number 7. Grandma Baker never gets in the car in 16 Candles Near the end of John Hughes' 16 Candles, Sam and her family are leaving for her sister Ginny's wedding. The second car that pulls out of the driveway is driven by Sam's father, Jim, which, despite being a five-seater vehicle, has somehow managed to cram six members of Sam's family in. How was this achieved without a major squeeze? Well, Sam's grandma Dorothy never actually gets in the car at all. She only pretends to. Actress Billy Bird simply walks around to the front passenger side door, and because there aren't enough spaces in the car to accommodate her, merely crouches down as Jim pulls out of the driveway. But hilariously, it's possible to just barely notice the actress's ruse through the car's windows and windshield as the car pulls out, though of course Hughes cuts away before Bird is fully revealed awkwardly crouched on the driveway. It's admittedly a pretty decent attempt to cover up an issue Hughes presumably only realised on set, that the car didn't have enough spaces for the number of actors is required for the scene. Granted, the audience isn't really concerned about this at all, so it's missed incredibly easily. Number 6. The actor's mouth is visible inside the turtle suit in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Say what you want about the 1990s Guy in Suits Turtles trilogy, but those rubbery suits had a sure charm to them, for the most part anyway. Yet there is one moment where the goofiness gives way to genuine nightmare fuel. When Leonardo and Raphael have a heart-to-heart -heart roughly an hour into the movie, they're walked in on by April O'Neil and Donatello. Donatello lets out a big laugh and, as a result, his mouth is pulled wide open by the puppeteer, which for a half second reveals the teeth of the in-suit Donatello performer Leif Tilden. For a film aimed at children, that's quite the horrifying visual, though at least not one that the majority of kids at the time were able to spot. With the benefit of HD and crystal clear freeze frames today though, it can't be missed once you know about it, so uh, yeah, sorry about that. Number 5. Jim Carrey waiting for his cue in Batman Forever 
Jim Carrey's performance as the Riddler in Batman Forever is often credited as the movie's big highlight. His restless, larger-than-life turn imbues the film with boundless energy, apparently much to the chagrin of his villainous co-star Tommy Lee Jones. And though Carey barely seems to stand still throughout the candy-coloured superhero film, there is fleeting accidental proof that he did so for at least a few seconds. Midway through the movie, Two-Face visits his lair with two assistants, Sugar and Spice, when the Riddler suddenly breaks in and introduces himself. But near the start of the scene, the Riddler is already visible on the far right-hand side of the screen. Jim Carey, who everyone on the shoot clearly assumed wasn't visible, was just quietly hanging out in the wings until he was given the cue to step into frame in earnest. Given that this all unfolds over a single unbroken take, there's a whole 30 second gap between when Carey is first sneakily spotted on screen and when he actually announces himself. That's the sort of restraint nobody ever expected from him, especially at the manic rubber face peak of his career. Number 4. Thorin is wearing modern rubber shoes in The Hobbit – The Battle of the Five Armies all of Peter Jackson's J.R.R. Tolkien adaptations are filled to the brim with mistakes. Yet, in the case of the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, the filmmaking is still so magnificent that it's incredibly difficult to give much of a damn. The same can't exactly be said for Jackson's less stellar Hobbit trilogy, which so often draws attention to its own artifice through its bloated storytelling and often subpar visual effects. Yet one moment in the final Hobbit movie, The Battle of the Five Armies, is rendered laughable for a most simple of mistakes. During Thorin's climactic battle with Azog the Defiler, when Thorin gets knocked off his feet, we can see the underside of his shoes for a brief moment. And it's clear that Thorin is actually wearing the sort of rubber-gripped shoes you'd expect to see in our modern world and not, well, Middle Earth. Throughout the rest of the movie, he's wearing more nondescript flat-soled shoes, yet presumably for safety reasons, actor Richard Armitage was given more practical footwear for this slippery set piece. On one hand, you'd think that Jackson would spend a little of his $300 million budget to paint out the rubber grips, but on the other, how many people have ever noticed? But now you know, you'll spot it every single time. Number 3. Area 51's Art Department in Independence Day at the start of Independence Day's third act, David Levinson becomes incredibly demoralised and, believing there's no hope for Earth to avoid its imminent destruction, decides to get blind drunk on whiskey instead. As he's drunkenly angrily trashing the lab, he's interrupted by his father Julius, and during his tirade, he trips backwards and knocks over a black bin. This reveals the bin's underside to the camera, which reads, Art Department. Given that it's pretty safe to assume that Area 51 doesn't have any such department, this is clearly a prop labelled by the movie's own art department, the underside of which nobody expected to be shown on screen. It's therefore also reasonable to deduce that Jeff Goldblum knocked the bin over by accident while staging David's drunken fit. One suspects director Roland Emmerich just left a few cameras rolling and told Goldblum to go wild. Number 2. The T-1000's head splits apart before it's shot in Terminator 2 – Judgment Day Terminator 2 may be about as close to perfect as movies come, but it's still not totally flawless, not even with James Cameron going back to digitally fix minor issues for the recent 3D re-release. A gaffe that's skirted by even the master filmmaker himself, then, occurs when the T-800, John Connor and Sarah Connor are attempting to flee Pescadero State Hospital and are pursued by the T-1000. After the heroes escape into an elevator, the T-1000 uses its liquid metal arms to pull the elevator doors open at which point the T-800 blasts it point-blank in the face. Yet in the shot where the gun goes off, you might notice that the T-1000's head is already partially mangled before the shotgun has even been fired. It's reasonable to assume that this is because the T-1000's head explosion effect, being entirely practical, couldn't be completely concealed, and so Cameron understandably believed 99% of viewers would never even notice it. Number 1. Maverick's Teleporting Sunglasses in Top Gun And finally, the ending to the original 1986 Top Gun is so gloriously triumphant that you're probably too swept up in the moment to notice a blatant continuity error pertaining to Maverick's iconic aviator sunglasses. During the climactic scene where Maverick and Iceman have their unforgettable wingman exchange, you'll probably remember that Maverick isn't wearing sunglasses. Yet as soon as Slider picks Maverick up and holds him in the air, the sunglasses have suddenly seemingly magically transported themselves directly onto his face, where they remain for the rest of the scene. It may be a pretty straightforward continuity issue at the end of the day, but considering that it's one of the movie's undeniable cornerstone moments, it's honestly surprising that more fans haven't spotted it over the years. 
And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.